The other day, I bought some large scents, and there's some nice large scents in here. Some of them have some PVC on them, and I'm going to remove that PVC. I'm going to restore these on video. I'm going to show you. And I'm also going to show you some of the all these uh, large scents that I purchased. They're really nice. So you don't want to miss this, so stay tuned. But first, here's my Coin Help You community. This is where I help people with coins. If you have a question, you come here and ask it. If you have an image of your coin you want me to look at, you come over here and you ask here. I don't do it on the phone, I don't do it in emails, and I don't do it in the YouTube comments. Over here, it's easier for me because I can just go to each post and answer the questions and see the coin, and I can be brief and take the time that I need to help everybody. Here's my coin website for my coin shop. If you want to purchase coins, support my channel, uh, bid on some auctions. If we have auctions up, we usually have them up. We get them up on Wednesday and they end on Monday night. Anyway, you can come over here and there's no sales tax uh, on our items. Uh, also, we have a flat rate shipping. So if you get a chance, take a look at what we have to offer over here on PortsmouthCoinShop.com. So here is the large sins that we are looking at. And I have over 20 years experience restoring coins. And I learned from trial and error and doing some studying and some chemistry and listening to people and talking to dealers and different things like that. And what I'm going to use today is 100% acetone that you can buy anywhere. Now, I don't recommend people cleaning their coins, but when you have coins that have some type of uh, PVC on it or tape or something like that, then acetone is good for the task. Now, I'm going to use Q-tips, and the reason is that it's quicker than dipping. You should probably dip, but I've never heard a coin doing this. I don't bear down on it. I just barely rub. And I also will show you on the Q-tip, you'll be able to see what color the uh, substance is, debris or whatever it is that's on the coin. You know, if it's tape or adhesive, if it's going to be like a dark brown or a light brown. If it's PVC, it'll be green. So then you can kind of identify what was on the coin and, you know, find out, hey, yeah, you should have removed it. Because PVC residue will definitely harm your coin. Well, we're going to look at them first, and then I've got a couple in here that are cleaned, and we're going to compare the coins that I restore to the clean coins. Here is an 1850 braided hair large scent. This one is in around very fine condition. I'll leave it in this 2x2, two two, this uh, capital 2x2, two two, and I will probably put it up for auction. I'll let everybody just bid on it. It's a nice brown coin. Kind of typical for large scents. This is what they look like usually. And, and of course, a lot of problem coins as well, just like this one. This is 1847. AUD tells us has environmental damage. So that means that it was damaged from storage of some sort and it actually altered the surface artificially so that's what that would mean for artificial also well artificial or in, in well, environmental damage you know can also be where it was dug in the ground it could have been found in the ground as well you can see it on the reverse even better there as you can see uh, just a little bit it's, really it's, it's a nice coin regardless most people would be proud to have a coin like that but I see a lot of them being sold like this in their problem coins. We're going to take a look at these two coins because these are cleaned. You can see the pink. Pink or orange signifies cleaned. And here's another one. And this one's been cleaned a little bit. I have another one, a couple others that are probably artificially toned. And we'll look at those. But this will give you an idea of what they look like when they've been cleaned and retoned. So we'll have those as an example setting here. And then I'll show you... And another 1853, which is a little off-center, not much, but it kind of looks cool like this. It's a nice coin. Like I said, the planchets were not in the best condition back then, so you know you're going to have some planchet flaws, little laminations, little issues, and surface issues, and things like that. This one here is an 1848, really common. Typically, you know they'll sell for you know 35 bucks. Uh, sometimes in this condition, you can also buy them at coin show sometimes for $15, 20 bucks. Then here's a, an 1838. This is probably the nicest one of the whole bunch. The problem is it has a scratch. That is an old scratch. It happened a long time ago and then it circulated afterwards. But you're talking about a coin that's probably in an AU condition, but it's, which so it makes it you know, worth $150. Uh, uh, plus, it just depends. Like wholesale is 150, it could be 200 dollars coin. 
But 1838, it's nice. They call these the matron head or the coronet. They're not the same as the braided. Then here's an 1848, another one. I'm just kind of going through these randomly, showing them to you. Then here's the other 1838. This one's probably closer to extra fine, but this one has a large die break all the way through. If I if that connects the rim, that would be you know a retained cut. I'm gonna have to look at it a lot closer because that is kind of a major break there down through the coin. So I'll take have a, a look at that one. It didn't. And on the back, there's kind of a scratch on that, too. A little bit of a mark down here at the bottom. I'm not sure what that is. There's a little bit of a damage. Unfortunately, you're going to see a lot of that, a lot of damage on these. Some will also carve the uh, E into a U. I've seen that a lot. So um, we're going to check that one out for a variety and see if what kind of what Newcomb variety it is. Then here's an 1840. And, you know, you look for small dates and large dates and different things like that in these because they have medium dates, tall dates. So always look for that. Um, there is just kind of an untapped thing because a lot of people don't know about large cents and they're a good thing to collect. They're a nice coin. They're a type coin. Some people don't like copper. I do like copper, not as well as I do my Morgan dollars, but I do like the copper. I do like the large cents. 1845. You can look for misplaced dates, repunched dates, things like that on these. I've got Newcomb's book. Um, you can buy it online. I think I paid 80 bucks for it, but it's actually handwritten. It's kind of complicated. It's, it's a big learning curve when you're looking at that kind of stuff, when you're trying to find that. Now, here's the ones that have a little bit of an issue, whether they've been old cleaning or PVC or some type of uh, stuff on them, residue. So we're going to look at these, and then we're going to try to restore a couple of them here on camera. And we'll see what's on them. We'll see if I'm right. See if there is something on it. This one may be okay. I'd consider that close to very fine. Low very fine to fine. Fine 15 to very fine 25. That's a range. But yeah, I mean, grading uh, scents, uh, you know, it's a little different. So you have to um, consult the photo grades, things like that. If you want to know the values. Always remember coins like these are going to be considered problem coins, even though they're still nice. They'll still sell for a little less but it seems like copper is a little more forgiving on copper than it is silver because silver shows the damage a little more whereas people are a little more confused on when it comes to copper because of the look of it the the patina this one you can see the clean lines and they are old clean lines and it's retoned so you can definitely see that already can't really hurt coins that are already hurt it's got a little graffiti on i see a w up here above the one 1846. 1846 has three different date sizes too. I think this is probably the taller medium. I haven't looked at it. I looked it up yet. Like I said, I'm not a, a huge expert on the large sense myself. I'm, I'm familiar with it, uh, but I'll definitely um, have the resources to look them up if I think there's something different or I think there's something worthy to look up. This one has somebody did something to the eye. I'm not really sure what's going on there. 1854, it's a common year. And another 1854. Looks like it has, it's a little misaligned. And that one might have a little bit of a premium on it. Actually, it's not missing. Looks like it's a little um, off center. And then you see someone carved it. They carved the E out. You see that a lot with these. It's kind of still a cool specimen. And then here's another in 1851. You can see it has something going on with the surface, and we're going to find out what that is. A little, they call it vertigra too, vertigray, whatever. Um, whenever you see little spots on uh, copper, and you know, like I said, uh, too much, not too much of it will is forgiven by collectors, especially if it's a nice coin to begin with. So this little porosity has some poor, has a little bit of issues with the planchet there, and that's what I'm talking about. It's probably found on the ground at one time. They'll probably stay this way. I don't think uh, as long as they're kept in a good environment, they'll remain the condition they're in. So there's no special technique to this. I just put the, the Q-tip inside the container, and this does evaporate, so you don't have to rinse it off or anything like that. But as you can see, this coin is just corroded, so there's no restoring it. It's going to stay as is. Just corrosion it's on that and 
And like I said, this one here is going to be okay. So let's go to the next one. Let's just see what's on this. I actually have to say there is a little bit of green from that other one. So yeah, there was a little bit of a PVC on that one. So let's go to a fresh Q-tip here on this one. Because there was a little bit on that one. I'm, uh, I don't know if someone, you know, somebody just gouged into that. But you can see I'm barely, and it's evaporating, I'm barely rubbing on the coin. It's already damaged. There's not a whole lot you can do. Try to improve the appearance, maybe get a little bit of that off there. Like I said, you will see it. There's green, so there was PVC on that coin. Anytime you get green off a coin, it's PVC, and some of it might be a little bit of the corrosion. Because, you know, copper will corrode green. But I didn't see a lot of that on here. So, yeah, I can definitely see that. So, it's good to get that off there. Help the coin. And I try to show everybody. I'm going to go to the other end of the Q-tip here. You know, that way... If you want to do this to a coin that's yours and you own it and you're okay with it, if you accidentally do something you should have, then you, and then that's fine. Uh, there's a little bit on that one, but there's just a lot of corrosion. Micro pitting and things like that on these coins. You know, and like I said, can't really hurt something that's already hurt. There was one in here I wanted to do in particular to see if it, that's, that's definitely clean. I'm not going to mess with that one. Uh, this one's okay. Still artificially toned or environmentally damaged on that one. And that one's okay. I think it's this one here. This is the one that I wanted to... One more we'll do here. A clean Q-tip. This one here's got a lot of pores uh, in it. Little micro pores. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of green on it there. But the thing of it is, you're not really going to do much about it. You're not really going to improve it much. It's just not going to help out. Now, I will wipe off some of this residue on them. It's just a little terry cloth. And nothing real harsh or very hard, but you can see the green come off that. So, you know, definitely didn't improve it a whole lot. But, but the thing of it is, it's, it's a copper plant that has issues. So thanks for watching my latest video. I hope this helped you. Um, obviously, you take a risk of cleaning any coin. And a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, you don't want to clean coins. Technically, you're kind of restoring a coin when you're removing substances that can harm the coin further or is so unsightly, like tape that's on the coin. You're never going to get rid of the tape lines. Um, you're going to be lucky if you if they're removed whenever you do that. But it, it can help. If you have plastic or something on your, you know, this acetone will get it off. It can't harm the metal itself. So with that, please like, share, and comment, and have a great day.